Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-4459, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures SCP-4459 and SCP-4459-A are to be contained separately in two standard containment lockers at Site-81. This portion has been stricken from the document. SCP-4459 and 4459-A are to be contained together in a standard-sized wardrobe made from oak or maple. The wardrobe should also be filled with other non-anomalous clothing items acquired along with SCP-4459. Every two to three weeks, the wardrobe is to be opened and aerated for at least 30 minutes, and the items inside should be dusted and checked for damage. Research involving SCP-4459 and 4459-A should be conducted under the supervision of head researcher Dr. Gene Stewart, and only with permission from site administration. Mobile Task Force Pi-6, Clown Wranglers, should also be on hand in the event of a containment breach. Description SCP-4459 is a gentleman's black silk top hat that shows moderate signs of wear including notable damage to the crown and brim. SCP-4459 was acquired along with a matching red silk hat box from an estate in Madison, Wisconsin on June 14, 2017, after local authorities had been called in reference to a domestic dispute involving the item. The Foundation became involved when the responding law enforcement officer reported that one of the belligerents was dressed like a clown and exhibited paranormal behavior that corresponds with documented behavior of the clowns associated with Herman Fuller's Circus of the Disquieting. Mobile Task Force Pi-6 were dispatched to the scene, where they retrieved SCP-4459 and 4459-A. The on-scene law enforcement officer underwent amnestic treatment and was issued cover story Epsilon Delta-12 false report domestic incident. The two belligerents were taken into custody and later amnesticized and released after interviews determined that they exhibited no anomalous behavior outside of the influence of SCP-4459. The anomalous properties of SCP-4459 only become apparent when worn. SCP-4459 and 4459-A collectively are host to an esoteric entity identifying as Frost. This entity claims that at some point in the past it was imprisoned via anomalous means inside the hat and its corresponding box by the Ringmaster of Group of Interest 233. Any non-anomalous human wearing the hat becomes possessed by this entity and begins to exhibit several anomalous qualities that they would not normally be able to express. These abilities correspond with documented behaviors attributed to the entities known as the clowns that are primarily associated with Group of Interest 233. SCP-4459 and 4459-A were collected along with numerous items of clothing that are assumed to have belonged to C.H. Wilkerson, the deceased former owner of Talia Lane, Madison, Wisconsin. While most of the clothing collected were of an antiquated design and style, none exhibited anomalous properties. These items were initially slated for disposal, but after a request from the SCP-4459 head researcher, these items were retained pursuant to the revised containment procedures. Attached Addenda Discovery The following note was located inside the interior lining of SCP-4459-A and has been appended to this file as Document 4459, Document 1. June 11, 1992 F&C If anyone deserves a rest, it's you two. Thank you for all the laughter, all the tears, and all the service over the years. I hope this gift will help you blend in where you never could before. Icky Addendum Initial Subject Interview 4459 Interview 1 Playing Log Now Interviewed SCP-4459 and D-2871 Interviewer Dr. Gene Stewart Forward. D-Class Subject Use Authorized by Site Administration. T-2871 Assigned. Due to the unpredictable nature of the subject, interview is conducted in a secure interrogation room with Dr. Stewart conducting the interview via teleconference. 
D-2871 was placed in a room with SCP-4459 on a table in the center of the room. D-2871 was directed to remove SCP-4459 from its case and place it upon their head. Begin log 2806-17, 10.18am. Good morning, D-2871. There is a hat in the box on the table. Please put it on. Yeah, yeah, sure. This is much easier than some of the other things y'all let me do. D-2871 removes the lid and lifts out SCP-4459. Hey, <laughs> this is kinda nice. <laughs> a bit old, but whatever. <laughs> D-2871 places SCP-4459 upon its head. A moment or two passed, then several physiological changes were observed to happen all at once. D-2871 is a member of a non-white ethnic group and their pigmentation was observed to shift across the expected ethnic spectrum to assume an off-white pallor similar to the white clown paint. Additionally, D-2871's depilated state was observed to change and hair growth was noted. D-2871, would you please describe what you are currently feeling? I'm sorry, Doctor. Jonathan is no longer available to answer your questions. A notable tonal shift is noted and D-2871's stance and demeanor is observed to be markedly different from documented norms. Subject shows significant deviation from recorded baseline. SCP-4459, please describe for me what you are currently feeling. If I were to choose but a single word, Dr. Stewart, that word would undoubtedly be... Loss. Why loss? Have you ever experienced loneliness, Doctor? I believe that most people have. Then have you also felt the cessation of that loneliness? Experienced transcendent joy that is communion with an equal, a partner, a lover? My personal life is not what we are here to discuss, SCP-4459. Then I assume that you have. No, Doctor, we are not discussing your personal experiences, but you asked why I felt loss. Without context, the explanation would simply be lost. Not everything can be easily defined by notation and categorized in your report. Then please answer the question. Why loss? Because without my soul, I am nothing. Without my heart beating in my chest, I am adrift. Without the warmth of their touch, I am alone. So you lost someone. I can understand... No. Doctor, I am afraid that you cannot. I don't mean to be rude, but it would be impossible for you to understand the depth of loss that I have experienced. You have never been forged. I'm not sure what that means. How about you tell me how you became associated with the hat? I was put there when Kaya and I retired from the circus. I was under the impression that the only way to do that was to be captured by us. Or if you were killed, it is never that simple, Doctor. The circus was hard for some, this is true, but for most of us, it was family. And the only one any of us ever really had. None of us ever really wanted to leave, but I knew that Kaya would eventually have to. Why is that? Kaya was mortal. Extended by milk, sure, but eventually they would grow old, and I would not. I always knew that falling in love with Kaya was going to lead to loss, but that was never even once a consideration. It happened, and I have no regrets. So you retired? Both of you? Yes. Eventually. Kaya stopped drinking the milk, and I knew it was time. We requested it. And our request was granted. Kaya could pass as a normal, but I could not. And the hat let you do that? It did more than that, Dr. Stewart. After that exchange, SCP-4459 lapsed into silence and refused to respond to any further questions. Eventually, D-2871 removed the hat and returned it to its box. Closing statement. It is my assessment that SCP-4459 does not present much of a threat, and while I would prefer to reclassify it as safe, 
I believe that the inherent unpredictability of its clown nature makes it so that would be ill-advised. End log. On July 21st, 2017, SCP-4459 breached containment during a routine cleaning of their containment area. D-2101 had been tasked with janitorial duties in that section, and during the completion of their task put on SCP-4459. After a few moments, SCP-4459 returned all of the clothing to the wardrobe before shifting into an incorporeal state and vanishing up through the ceiling. The Hume level fluctuation generated by this shift triggered the containment alert, but site security was unable to prevent SCP-4459 from leaving. Mobile Task Force Pi-6 were activated, and they proceeded to attempt to locate and recontain SCP-4459, which they initially failed to do. During the course of their following investigation, members of Pi-6 returned to Madison, Wisconsin in an attempt to track down SCP-4459. Evidence was found that SCP-4459 had been visiting the gravesite of C.H. Wilkerson, and several items were retrieved from the scene. Document 4459, 2. The following documents appear to be several pages torn from a journal. I'm not sure what that really meant. I do know that Kai is struggling to find a purpose here at the circus, and I really want to help them find a place. Poodles and Squiggly are very supportive of my endeavors to make a home here for Kaya, and I was surprised that... Oh, what am I talking about? Of course they would be supportive. They always considered me a younger sibling, and they wanted what was best for me. I did not think they ever expected me to find such comfort in the arms of a human, much less one that was not even different. But what can you say? All I know is that I want the best for Kaya, even if that means I ultimately must let them leave. April 2nd. Icky came to me with a suggestion today. She has always been curious about how resistant Kaya is to the more dangerous side effects of milk, and she suggested that we try feeding them a less dilute version than the candy. I'm not sure if this is the best route to take, but Kaya seemed really excited about the prospect. Quote, Whatever lets me be closer to you, was all they would say about it. I think if this is the only way to help Kaya feel more at home here, then I'm all for it. April 3rd. Kaya got really sick today after trying the brew that Icky made of. She said that it was much stronger than the candy, but nothing like the stuff that we drink. Tilly brewed it up for us, and Kaya drank it down right away. I guess the good news is that they are definitely not dead, but they fell asleep and have not woken up yet. Manny said that Kaya really is just sleeping, and I shouldn't worry. But I cannot help but worry. What if... There definitely needs to be something done about it. The show is going way better than I originally thought it would. Kaya has taken to the aerials with a talent I did not expect, and Icky says that Fuller will like having another show for the big top. He's always grumbling about getting something new, something exciting. He has gotten meaner about it, though, and he has started to press us all harder to do more, be more, be better, whatever that means. The fun lovers are all restless now, and I can tell that Icky is really nervous about that. May 28th. Kaya fell today. June 1st. It took a few days, but Kaya was finally able to get up and walk around. While not as resilient as we are, I was surprised how little the fall actually hurt them. I keep asking Kaya either to take it easy or allow Dick to finish the transformation, but they still did not want to accept the full conversion. I think they're afraid that becoming a clown would make them different. I tried telling Kaya that I would love them anyway, but... I can tell that they're really worried that they would become something else. <laughs> I guess I can understand that. Icky says she's not the same person as she was before she became a clown, and it makes sense that Kaya would be so nervous. January 22nd. The show is going great. We added a few new tricks to the lineup that we've been working on together, and I'm surprised at how well they fit in with the rest of the act. Kaya's really thrown themselves into the performances. And I think that they really have finally found their place. The look on their face when they're not holding on to me makes me feel so safe. It doesn't matter that falling would not really hurt me. I know that Kaya will not drop me, and that makes me feel amazing. I'm so glad that they are finally at home. I think I'm going to get Tilly to make something special. February 13th. So much has happened, and I've not really had the time to put it all down. Everything seems to be coming to a head between Fuller and Manny. They're fighting all the time now, and their yelling matches are really beginning to take their toll on the rest of the cast. 
Those damn freewheelers are everywhere now. I can't even get alone time with Kaya in the alley anymore. They're always watching, always leering just around the corner. Poodle said that we don't have to worry about them, that Icky won't let them touch us. But I'm afraid for Kaya. They're no longer as fragile as they were when they arrived, but they're still not a clown, no matter how much Icky says they are. I asked Dick about whether or not he thinks that... Over the next several days, Mobile Task Force Pi-6 maintained an observation post at the cemetery, but SCP-4459 was never apprehended. Over the course of their operation, several more documents were left at the gravesite, along with a collection of toys and flowers. Document 4459-3 Has finally settled down. Whatever happened in the matinee must have been really bad because neither Icky or Manny would talk about it. The only thing either of them would say was that Fuller was gone and was Essie's problem now. I'm relieved, really. We took some time off for touring, and Icky told us that we could all decide whether or not we wanted to stay. I don't think anyone left. And Kai and I talked a bit about it. I know that they're worried about what things are going to be like without Fuller, but things were okay when Fuller was away before. How is this any different? June 16th. We're touring again. We returned to Prime and we set up outside of a place called Madison, Wisconsin. Kaya says they used to have family here, and I think they were actually hoping to see someone that they recognized. They were disappointed when none of them showed up. But I think that was only because they wanted to show off. The show is really awesome now, and we've even started incorporating several of the other clowns into the act. Lolly wanted to play around with us too, but I don't think she has the right temperament for it. She has a really good magic show, but flying takes a lot of concentration. Especially with a... It's hard to imagine that we've been at this for so long now. Kai said that we've been performing together for almost 23 years. <laughs> it seems like it was only yesterday. March 4th. I don't know what changed, but Manny said it's finally safe for us to go back to Prime again. I overheard him talking to Icky about the Essies again. But this time he seemed to be saying good things about them. I, I don't think he's ever had anything nice to say about them, but... Whatever they did, he certainly thinks it was a good thing. At least there's a prime to return to. Sometimes I'm glad I don't know all the things he does. March 11th. Kaya fell again today, and this time they did not bounce back as quickly. Lately, they have been talking about how slow they feel in the morning. I never thought about them getting older, but no, I'm not going to think about that right now. We have a show to prepare for. September 13th. Kai has stopped drinking milk. We argued about it, but they said it was time. That keeping up with me was becoming too hard. I can tell that they really want to, but even the milk is not enough anymore. I think that fall affected them more than they expected. I'm scared. I, I don't want to lose them. I think I'll go talk to Icky. September 14th. Icky has a plan. She was telling me all about part of how the matinee works and she thinks she can replicate some of the things that Fuller... On July 28, 2017, SCP-4459 manifested at the gravesite once again, but did not leave anything behind. Mobile Task Force Pi-6 were able to surround and apprehend SCP-4459 without incident. After SCP-4459 was returned to containment, several attempts were made to conduct another interview but SCP-4459 refused to speak to anyone. Eventually, Dr. Stewart was able to convince SCP-4459 to cooperate with a final interview. And this is Subject Interview 4459, Interview 8, Playing Log. Interviewed, SCP-4459 and D-2871. Interviewer, Dr. Gene Stewart. Forward, D-Class Subject Use Authorized by Site Administration, D-2871 assigned. Initial attempts at interviewing the subject since recontainment have all failed. I have decided to try one last time. But I have decided to assume the risk of interviewing SCP-4459 in a standard interrogation room. I brought along several of the items left at C.H. Wilkerson's gravesite in the hope that they will prompt SCP-4459 to speak with me. Begin log 1209-17, a.m. D-2871 retrieved SCP-4459 and placed the hat upon its head. For several moments after the expected transformation, D-2871 remained motionless, then looked up at Dr. Stewart. 
Good morning. I see. Did you read them? The journal entries? Yes, I did. I, I think I understand your loss a little better now. Maybe. What do you mean? Look, if you're going to be uncooperative, I will just terminate this- The crown forged us, Dr. Stewart. It made us one person. Guy and I, well, we got to grow old together. I never expected to be able to do that. How was it able to do that? I do not really know, to be honest. Icky said that some of Fuller's magic remained behind in his top hat. It was one of the most precious things she owned from back then. She only brought it out to wear on special occasions. Gaia did not want to take such a gift. They said it was worth more than a clown and an old performer. So it had something to do with- You do not understand, Doctor. It was not just a top hat. It was his crown. It was part of what sustained the whole circus. It let us know where all of us were all the time. Iggy used it to help keep us safe. Without it, I, I do not know. There was a reason the circus did not visit Prime for a while after we left. That was a really costly gift then, but it meant so much more to us. It let us be together. I do not think that even Aki knew what would happen. I guess she thought it would just function as a kind of disguise, but when Kaya put on the crown, they became human again, completely. And I was there with them, inside them, a part of them for the first time. I truly knew how much Kaya loved me. At last, we were one. Okay, I, I can accept that. What happened after that? We moved to Wisconsin. Kaya always loved it there. Icky gave us enough of your money so that we could retire and we just got old. So. What happens when no one is wearing the ha <laughs> crown? I am not alone anymore, Doctor. I had to be sure. I'm sorry that I left without permission, but I... I had to say goodbye. That must have been hard for you. I'm sorry. More than you know. Would you let me go back to my box now? I'm so tired. Okay. Thank you for your... Could you give me back our things, please? I know you still have all the clothing that you took when you captured me. It would comfort me. I would like all of our things together, like you found it. I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Doctor. I would appreciate that. You're welcome, Frost. End lock. Closing statement. I am going to request that all of the items found from the Wilkerson estate be collected and the containment procedures revised. Approved. Site Director Actus. End log. This concludes today's lecture. Thank you for listening, if indeed you still are, and you're all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to Zargaron, The Morrigan, Professor Puffer, Ritalius, Karim El Ashmoui, Alatreon, Your Local Fishman, Derivative, Talk of Villagers, Gabriel Hawkins, Nate the Klein, Lost Boy, African Submarine Vor, Savanity, Kristoff Kozak Slezak, HMS Lily, The Almighty Fish, Gav the Clumsy Containment Specialist, Pure Osmium, Sio Dio Demnatus, Brian Sanchez, Matthew Gilmore, Eric Corbidge, Longinus, James Saba, and NJ Vojak. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash the Volgan. Thank you.